Welcome to the AMATIC 2018 webinar series. Today we're talking about professional development beyond the conference with John Oakes, myself, and later Mary Menard. Please note that the views expressed by the presenter are not necessarily the views of AMATIC. Commercial products mentioned by the presenters are not endorsed by AMATIC. McGraw-Hill is our sponsor of our webinar series this year. So uh, we have, thank you very much, McGraw-Hill. Uh, bi biography, we're going to just let John introduce himself, and as it, ev everyone comes into their part, we'll just have them introduce themselves as well and give a little bit of history of their role um, here. So I'm going to have go John go ahead and switch over to, to the uh, presentation slides. And then don't forget to turn your mic on. Oh, yes, I was waiting for you to stop so that uh, we wouldn't hear you twice or something like that. So Perfect, thanks. So welcome again, everyone. So as Julie mentioned, I am going to say a little bit about myself. And so I am currently the oops, AMATIC Midwest Region Vice President and I was actually the professional development coordinator before Julie. And um, so today's topic is professional development beyond the conference. And if you've ever went to a conference, maybe you feel like this guy right here, you're just left hanging after the conference and you don't know what to do next. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So. Uh, here is a a little bit of well, if I can get this to advance here a little bit about what we do here at AMATIC in terms of professional development and this is our position statement and so we really are really uh, encouraging the participation and retention of all students in mathematics and mathematics re related disciplines and to provide all students with a meaningful mathematics education, ongoing faculty development is necessary, and colleges should support all of their mathematics faculty as they grow, improve, learn, and implement new instructional ideas. So that is a Maddox position on professional development. And again, we're going to go into some of the ways today that a Maddox is uh, achieving those, uh, those things. So how can a Matic help you go beyond conference attendance? Well, I just found this article recently from Higher Ed Jobs that was published back in January of this year. And it gives some short bullet points of things that you could do. And one of them is serving as a chair or a committee member. And a Matic has nine committees and four academic networks or a nuts that anyone can be a part of and uh, we're going to go through all of these today and have a little introduction from all of the committee chairs and then hopefully after that you'll get a little sense of the types of committees that amatic has and uh, which one of them you might want to be a member of or participate in in some other way possibly. So, whoops. All right, and so uh, as I mentioned, anyone can be a part of one of these committees and it really is as little or as much as you want to do uh, because a lot of the discussions happen via emails or blogs or websites or on social media or in, in person at committee meetings at conferences or regionally. And uh, so there are lots of ways that you can get involved. So we're first going to hear from Paula Wilhite, the Developmental Mathematics Chair. I'm Paula Wilhite, and I'm Chair of the Developmental Mathematics Committee for AMATIC. And I want to welcome you to join our committee. Uh, the purpose of our committee is to provide a forum for the exchange of ideas to improve developmental mathematics. 
Um, we do that by providing professional development, improving practice, uh, curriculum and instructional designs, and then also a way of sharing the reform movements, the changes that are occurring nationally. All right, so that's a little bit from Paula. And our next committee chair is Dan. I'm Paula Hyde, and I'm chair. Of okay, then. Here, here's Dan. And uh, ignore that initial look on his face here, but he is going to tell us a little bit about the Innovative Teaching and Learning Committee now. Hi, this is Dan Petrock. I'm the Innovation and Teaching and Learning Committee Chair for AMATIC. Just want to invite you to join our committee, uh, participate in ongoing discussions in our Google group, and any other professional development we offer. Uh, all are welcome, and we invite a multitude of topics, and uh, that's it. So, as you mentioned, Dan, say the Innovative Teaching Learning Committee, or the ITLC, as they like to be called, does have a Google group and it's one of the most active of all of the committees. And uh, there's a current discussion going on in the Google group about open educational resources and another discussion about uh, how to improve online teaching quality at, at colleges. And this is the committee that puts together the Ignite at the AMATIC conference every year. And so there's a lot that this committee does and it's a very exciting committee to be a part of. So next we have our MAC committee and this is Stefan Barato. So this is Dan Petrock, this is Dan Petrock. And okay, this is Dan Petrock again, apparently. So here is Stefan. Hi, I'm Stefan Barato, and I'm the chair of the Math Mathematics and its Applications for Careers, MAC, committee for AMATIC. Come to the AMATIC website, find our committee, join us. We think that math is best when done with applications. Show them why, show them how. So, Stefan's committee is also a very active committee, and right now, they actually are looking for folks who are attending the conference to present at their theme session in Orlando, or even if you're not actually planning to attend the conference, that you consider giving them some ideas of topics that may be of interest to present on, or maybe even ideas of uh, things that the committee can do in the future. So again, that's another very exciting committee to be a part of. All right, oh, so now for the MIC committee, as they like to call themselves, and the, their leader is Scott Peterson. So let's hear a little bit from Scott now. Hi. Uh, I'm Scott Peterson. I'm the chair of the Mathematics Intensive Committee in AMATIC, and I would like to invite you all to come join us, especially those that teach courses that um, have college credit associated with them. Uh, we have, cover a large range of things, and we do have some fun, so please come and uh, join us. And uh, we're getting a Facebook up and ready, so we can... Uh, you can join the Facebook and uh, find out some more information. So as you heard Scott mention, this committee is getting a Facebook group ready and I will be talking more about social media within AMATIC later on in the hour. And uh, if you have any questions for Scott, always feel free to reach out to him. And uh, this committee is also very actively looking for ideas and what do AMATIC members want out of this committee. And uh, personally for me, I just I submitted an idea to the committee that I would want to know more about uh, trigonometry applications and things like that. And so this is a very good avenue to uh, share and gather new ideas for even in your own 
classroom. So this is another great committee to join. Hi. It, it wasn't working the way you said, Julie. <laughs> so I, that's okay. So the next committee is the placement and assessment committee, or they like to call themselves PAC. And Rachel Bates is the new committee chair for uh, this committee. And they are very active as well. And I think you can imagine why with all of the uh, placement tools fluctuating throughout the industry. And even at my own college, we're talking about placement and how to improve it. And how to possibly use multiple measures. And uh, this would be a great committee for you to get some ideas about things and like issues that might be going on at your college and uh, what others around the country might be doing. So let's take a moment to hear from Rachel now. Hello, my name is Rachel Bates. I am the committee chair for the Assessment and Placement Committee through AMATIC. Our committee is focusing on assessment and placement strategies for mathematics education courses and we have great conversations about best practices and I encourage you all to come out and visit our committee. All right, so again, as I mentioned and how Rachel just mentioned right now, they do have a lot of uh, discussions that you can get involved in and actually this committee is really trying to try new things out so this past conference in San Diego they actually broadcast at one of the conference sessions via zoom like you're on today and so even folks who were not at the conference could see the session at the conference and so if you get in on their committee, that's one of the things that I know that they're trying to do is uh, giving you the opportunity to get in on the discussion whether or not you can be at the conference or not. So the next committee is our medic or research in mathematics education and two year colleges and now this committee is actually very active. I just got an email from them last night with about five different initiatives that they are actually working on. The research session at the annual conference every year, they have some position statements that they're considering writing and a lot of other interesting initiatives that uh, you could check out if you are interested in research. So let's take a moment to hear from Ann. Hi, I'm Ann. I'm the chair of Amatics Research Committee. Uh, we call it our medic. Um, that stands for Research and Mathematics Education at Two-Year Colleges. And the members of our committee are either doctoral students doing research in mathematics teaching and learning at two-year colleges. We have some people who are researchers and community college faculty members at the same time. A few of us are university researchers, but we're all really interested in teaching and learning at mathematics in two-year colleges. One of the main goals of our committee is to support high quality, qualitative and quantitative research in our area, and to really disseminate that this is a really important area for inquiry. So if you think you might be interested in research, or if you think you might be interested in using research as a practicing teacher, come by our committee. It's a lot of fun. So as Anne mentioned, this committee actually has all different types of people involved, even from graduate students or actually um, practicing teachers and researchers. So there's a variety of different folks who are involved. So anyone who wants research at the two-year college level is definitely invited to participate or join the committee. So the next committee is the statistics committee and this is led by Julie Hansen and if you join this committee Julie will always make sure to send out a lot of reminders about webinars that the statistics committee might actually be holding or 
uh, either AMATIC webinars or joint webinars with the ASA or uh, new activities for the statistics classroom or just some uh, information on policy changes to those states that might be rolling out statistics classes and uh, just a lot of information that Julie finds and collects she'll pass it on to everyone regularly. So let's take a little listen to Julie now. My name is Julie Hampson. I chair the Amatic Statistics Committee. We're a Amatic Special Interest Group for Statistics Teachers. So if you teach statistics, please consider joining. You can go to Amatic's website to sign up for the Statistics Committee. And while you're there, please check out the Amatic Statistics Resources webpage and look at all the resources on that page for those of us who teach statistics. So as Julie mentioned, there is the statistics resource page on the AMATIC website. So in addition to all of the great resources that Julie will pass along in emails to the committee members, the committee also maintains that page as a place for people to go who want interesting things to use in their statistics classroom. All right, so now it is time to hear from Mark Coleman of the Teacher Preparation Committee. And this committee also has a very nice website where they have member submitted activities that can be used in teacher preparation classes. And uh, you are more than welcome to download their activities or uh, contribute some of your own, but they all go through the vetting of their committee before they're posted on their website so that you know that they're really, really good activities that someone else has used and they've been uh, reviewed a little bit before they've been uploaded. So let's go and take a listen to Mark now. Hi, this is Mark Coleman. Hey, I am the teacher prep committee coordinator and I would welcome you to join our committee. Uh, we have a website that we'd like to encourage you to contribute your ideas to and we have all, the, all sorts of activities going on so please join us. So uh, again as Mark mentioned there is that website out there that the teacher preparation committee put a lot of hard work into and so I definitely would encourage you to look into it. I know that teacher preparation courses are sometimes uh, difficult to find appropriate resources for and so this is a great way to do that and to collaborate with others. So finally this is our newest and ninth committee the mathematics standards in the first two years of college committee and so this is a committee that is dedicated to upholding the standards that AMATIC has had in Crossroads and in Beyond Crossroads and in our most recent standards document, AMATIC Impact. And so that is what this committee is about, just making sure that the, the standards are actually being upheld. So if you are interested in that sort of work, Julie and this committee is the place to get involved. So let's take a listen to Julie now. Hi, my name is Julie Phelps, and I would love it if you would in, if you would join the Math Standards Committee. It would be wonderful. It's all about amatic impact and making a difference for our students. Please join us. So as Julie mentioned, it really is all about making a difference for our students. That's why we uphold the standards every day as a matic and as educators in our classrooms and as representatives at our colleges and it just really is truly important work so finally let's also talk about the a nets for a moment there are four a net amatic networks or a nets and they are the division and department leadership a net International Mathematics, Adjunct Faculty Issues, and Mathematics for Liberal Arts. And I will say that uh, these are all great ANETs to join as well. 
I know that the division and department leadership ANET has a lot of position statements that they are working on. I actually am working on one with them right now on the uh, equity in mathematics that is probably going to be coming out very, very soon. It just went through the initial review process and the International Mathematics ANET is actually very, very uh, interesting and uh, very involved. A group from that ANET went to the International Ma uh, Mathematics Congress, I think that ICME, and, uh, and gave a presentation there last summer. And then the adjunct faculty issues, ANET is also working on a position statement and that's going up for review very soon. I just actually had a chance to get the latest draft of it this morning. And the Mathematics for Liberal Arts ANET is always looking for new members to give them ideas of what types of things people are looking for in terms of topics and ideas and and thoughts of how to move that type of mathematics forward. All right, so now if you don't want to join an AMATIC committee or ANET, you might actually just decide to run for the AMATIC board. So in our election next year, you could consider nominating yourself or a colleague for the positions of pre president elect, secretary, treasurer, or regional vice president. So we are always looking for people to run for an office, and we like to have at least two people running for every office because it's really nice to have involvement by everyone and have uh, contested elections. So please, again, consider nominating yourself or a colleague or maybe just joining an ANET or a committee if you want to start a little bit smaller than just jumping in and, and being on the AMATIC board. But I will say in my little over two years now being the Midwest Vice President that it is a very rewarding experience and I've uh, learned more than I ever could have imagined to apply to my own teaching and to uh, help with my own student success as well. So now that we've talked about ways that you could get involved beyond conference attendance as serving as a chair or committee member, I will now go into like how you could serve as a reviewer or maybe a writer or contribute to one of the AMATIC publications. And I have been checking the, the chat over on the side. So if you ever have a question, uh, feel free to chime in as well at any time. So as I mentioned, one of the ways that you could participate beyond the conference is to be a reviewer or a writer even for one of the AMATIC publications. So we have the Mathematic Educator and the AMATIC News and the New Standards Document Impact, which there will actually be a new Impact Live that will be launching along with the Standards Document that anyone can contribute to. And then there are the electronic proceedings, which those go online after every conference. So if you were to say present at the conference, you could always upload your materials to be part of those electronic proceedings. And then there are the guidelines and position statements, which you could work on if you joined one of the wonderful committees that we just talked about. So as I mentioned again, there are always a lot of ways to get involved with the AMATIC publications. 
Now, sometimes you may feel like you want some mentoring or you want to be a, a mentor outside of the conference. So Amatic does have a mentoring program for new faculty, new full-time faculty in their first three years of full-time teaching, and it's called Project Access, which is advancing community colleges, careers, education, scholarship, and service. And they are always looking for both faculty to be a part of the program and also faculty to be mentors to the new faculty. So if you are interested in being a mentor to one of the new faculty members, this would be a wonderful way for you to get involved in that way. I actually got an email last week asking for volunteers to be a mentor because Aidmatic Project Access is going to be expanding from 24 fellows every year or every cohort into 30 every year starting this fall. So the program is very popular. There's always a lot of folks that uh, apply and we want to try to get as many people into the program and get mentoring as as possible. So again, for that to happen, we also need mentors. And so if you're interested, that again is a good way to get involved. So here is the official description of Project Access. And its goal really is to do exactly what it says here, to provide experiences that will help new faculty become more effective teachers and active members of the broader mathematical community. And so uh, with that being said, I would say that even if you are a mentor for the program, that it could help you become more effective and more active in the community as well. And so this really is a overall good experience for everyone. Now, the next thing, oh yes, I, I did see the comment in the, in the chat and it says Project Access Fellow here. So welcome to Brooks and the mentors are wonderful. I absolutely agree. I was in Project Access myself. So, you know, what cohort were you in, Brooks? I mean, you can type it out, but I was in cohort nine. I also think that as a mentor for Project Access in the past as well, that I had a very positive experience because the a person I was mentoring was working on a statistics class and I got to see some new ideas that I even got to use in my own classroom. So as I mentioned, the, the mentor and the mentee work together and can even learn from each other. Okay, so the next thing is leading or participating on a grant writing team. A Matic is always part of some grant and one of the grants that AMATIC is supporting right now is Project Slope, which is scholarly leaders originating as practicing educators in two-year college mathematics. And also I know there's lots of other AMATIC members who are part of other grants such as the STAT prep grant or the Algebra Instruction at Community Colleges grant, which my college is actually personally involved in. And so, oh, do we need to put Mary on mute? Do I need to mute myself? I, I can hear feedback, but, <laughs> oh, sorry, Mary, I didn't mean to, uh, <laughs> to call you out there, but I, I was hearing feedback. So, there are lots of grants that AMATIC members are actually part, part of. So a lot of these grants come from members who are part of the research committee or the R-MEDIC committee. So if you are interested in grants 
or grant writing or being part of those types of projects, I would definitely reach out to the research or the R medic committee and make sure that you start getting their updates about new initiatives or grants that might be going on. So the next thing that you might do to go beyond conference attendance is just engage in teaching and learning webinars. And AMATIC has plenty of webinars, all facilitated by Julie Gunkelman, who is here to talk about them right now. So here is one of them. I'll put myself on mute. Thanks, John. Um, so we do have some webinars coming up. Obviously, you've already found AMATIC webinars because you're here joining us today or you're watching the recording. I just prepared my board report and we had over a little over 300 people actually attend our live webinars and 800 watch them later. So that's pretty cool uh, that we're reaching so many offices uh, beyond the conference, if you will getting getting in touch with people outside. Um, the next webinar that we have coming up is um, with Jessica. It's a it's a how to integrate study skills into your math class and increase student retention. It's very popular. There's lots of people registered for it. I can't wait for that on March the 7th. I think he's got one more for me. <laughs> there you go. So if you're looking for all those past recordings of the webinars, um, if you could see bit.ly slash amatic dash webinars, that'd be awesome. I do have this and every email that I send as well. So it's on the in my signature so you can grab it right from there as well. So you don't have to go looking for it. Thanks, John. I think Mary's next, right? Oh, uh, no, no, no. I, I changed the order. You know, so, John, keep me on my toes. <laughs> so I will say, going back to actually Jessica's webinar for a, a moment here, that Jessica is also a, a former Project Access Fellow, and I was in her cohort. And uh, the study skills that she's going to talk about were developed as her Project Access project. And so that's part of why I say that Project Access and some of these other things that you can get involved in at AMATIC and through AMATIC are very important because you never know what projects or initiatives or new activities or things like that will come out of your working with other people or collaborating with other people or just talking to other people. So formal networking is just as important as informal networking. So that's always a, a great reminder, I think. Even for myself, I have to remind myself that I want to always try to learn something in either a formal or informal setting. All right, so again, when I say going beyond conference attendance, Ironically, one of the other things that you can do is collaborating with faculty at other institutions on teaching and learning projects. Now, I'm going to mention the conference here, even though we're talking about going beyond the conference, because this is still a great way to collaborate with other faculty. So our conference is coming up in November in Orlando, and this year's theme is the main attraction. And I've been told and warned that I cannot say much more about our conference except for that. <laughs> now, there are some ways that you can get involved. If you are going to the conference, there is still time to be a presider. And there is the chat and chew session. You can go to the forums on the position statements or the research sessions. There's always the regional luncheons where you can get more informal networking with some colleagues that are closer to where you live and have lunch informally and network. There's the Faculty Math League, which is very exciting, very similar to the uh, student athlete, but the faculty members get involved and compete. You can go to the committee meetings, and this is where the committees have their 
have their uh, formal meeting every year, but as I mentioned, they have Zoom meetings and discussion boards and websites and lots of other things that you can engage with throughout the year. The Ignite session, and if you don't know what Ignite is, it's put on by the Innovative Teaching Learning Committee every year, and every year they always put it on the internet so that if you can't make the conference, that is one of the things that you can still see. It was actually done on Facebook Live last year. And of course, you cannot forget all of the great sessions at the, the conference. I'm not sure if the other bullet point should have been removed, so I'm just going to ignore it was there. But you can see that uh, there are some complimentary things that you might be able to take advantage of if you attend the the conference this fall. So here are the dates of some of the upcoming conferences and we'll be in Orlando this year, then Milwaukee, the region that I'm in next year, Spokane, Phoenix, and Toronto after that. So I'm pretty sure that our 2023 location will be announced soon and I'm pretty excited about where we will be going next. So even if you cannot make this year's conference, consider going to one of the upcoming ones or uh, seeing how you can engage with, say, watching the Ignite session online or engaging with your committee through any of them, like the placement and assessment committee that put their committee meeting on Zoom last year. So there's still ways to get involved. And if you do have a suggestion for keynote speakers for the annual conference, you can go to this website and recommend a keynote speaker. So we are always looking for that and other suggestions on how to make the conference even better. So this again could be ways for us to bring parts of the conference home to all of you who may not be going to the conference. And now it is time for Mary. Hello. So uh, I am the new uh, traveling workshop coordinator. I am fairly new at this, uh, but I am really enjoying the process so far. So just a reminder that our traveling workshops are definitely customized to fit your event audience. Um, usually about 30 participants are available uh, to come to that event and much better price point uh, than sending faculty to a completely different conference and only one of them can attend. And of course, it's convenient because it's at your location. So I, um, I'm still learning a lot, but I am enjoying every part of this. So. Is there another slide or is that it? Oh, so there I am. <laughs> My name is Mary Menard. It is pronounced Mary, if you were wondering. Um, just send me an email if you have any questions and I would welcome all. All right, thank you, Mary. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, John. So I, I agree with Mary that this idea of a traveling workshop really is important in connecting people outside of the conference at a cheaper price point. And when you're talking about actually collaborating with colleagues at other institutions, you could have a traveling workshop at your institution and make it say, a regional or a state workshop, bring in people from all over your state or all over your region to participate and learn new things alongside you. So I am a full supporter of the Traveling Workshop Program and my local affiliate, Mishmatic, the Michigan Mathematical Association of Junior Colleges just posted a Traveling Workshop a couple of years ago and it was one of the inquiry-based learning workshops, and it was absolutely 
terrific. I learned a lot from it, and it was a really good price for uh, what we got, a very tremendous uh, value. So I would definitely recommend looking into that, and we do have traveling workshop grants that are available, but the next one won't be available until December of this year. So you can look for those, but at least get it on your radar that it's something that uh, you might want to look into. All right, so how else can you connect with colleagues outside of the conference? You can follow AMATIC on social media. So we are on facebook.com slash AMATIC and we will try to keep the Facebook page as updated and as interesting as possible. But I don't know what it says about us, but I just looked at our insights yesterday and it said our Valentine's Day post from yesterday was the most reacted to post in ever, ever actually. So I guess people really like Valentine's Day that much. So we will try to again keep this as up to date to, as possible, but if you guys go out there, you will see as many updates from us as we can uh, manage to get out there. So you can also follow us on Twitter or YouTube where this presentation's recording will actually be put after it is all said and done or on Instagram. So uh, how do we get content to put on these platforms? Well, we have a brand new AMATIC social media request form and it is going live. Well, it's live as of today. So <laughs> I will say that that link is actually very long. And so there is a short bit.ly for it, but I don't remember what it is right now. So you can just go to form.jotform.com slash 802-7529-376-5162 if you can remember all those numbers and you can put in your request of something to put on a Matic social media platform. So you can see some of the items that you might want to have posted, announcements, information from affiliates or pictures or links to articles or mathematical fun facts, conference reminders, things that uh, you might have seen a save the date for from another organization, or even if you want to know about something and you want AMATIC to highlight something on the social media platforms to answer a question that you may have about AMATIC, you can ask us to do that as well. So whatever you find interesting, we would like to know about it so that we can put things out there that will be engaging to, to others. So this is pretty exciting, I think. It's the first time that we've had anything like this where we are really asking AMATIC members and anyone actually to provide us with things to put on our social media pages. So this is brand new. I, I believe you guys are pretty much the first people to be hearing about this. So I hope that you are as excited as I am about this new avenue to engage with AMATIC. So how can you get involved locally beyond the conference? And again, there are affiliate conferences and those would be like my state conference, Mishmatic. And then there are lots of other Matics around the country. So just go to the AMATIC webpage and find your local affiliate and see if they have a conference or at least an email list that you can get on. There is the Student Math League, and that is a way for you to get involved professionally by mentoring some students as 
they prepare for a math competition. And we've had the Student Math League at my college for the longest time. And I, I actually think that the students who have been a part of it actually really enjoy the opportunity to have a shot at winning the $3,000 scholarship every year, among other things. So there's a lot to look forward to with that. And then new this year is the Student Research League. And uh, that is something where the students are given a research problem and have one week to complete it and then submit their written report. And I am actually looking to put together a group at my college to do that. And I, I think the students seem to be excited about it. I mean, I don't know what a look of excitement is supposed to be like, but they seem pretty excited as far as I can tell. And I feel like it's going to be a good opportunity for me professionally to go ahead and uh, mentor some of the students in research. So lots of ways for you to actually engage, not with even AMATIC members or with colleagues, but more with your students and get better at communicating with your students. And that will make us uh, better teachers in general, I think. So let's see. Oh, now, if you want to get more involved locally or regionally, there also are the regional Facebook groups and the regional Facebook group for the Midwest region, for which I'm the vice president of, is located at bit.ly slash amatic Midwest. And so if you're not already a member of that one, I would encourage you to go and join that one or the one of your region. But even if you're not from the Midwest, join this one anyway. You can see it has 199 members right now. So I just need one more at least. So I would like to get to 200. So if we can get this to 200, then I will actually bring a taco to the Ignite session in Orlando and eat it. All right, so some of you mentioned tacos in the chat earlier, so this is your taco. So bring this up to 200 and I will eat a taco. Now, Amatic also has some ways for you to engage by nominating yourself or others for awards. And so this is just to recognize the hard work of everyone in the institutions and in the two-year colleges, working with students every day, engaging beyond the conference, doing all of the hard work that they do. And this is just a way for AMATIC to give back in that regard. So we have the Peskoff Award, which is exclusively for former Project Access Fellows. We have the Margie Hobbs Award, which is to uh, help alleviate the cost for someone who is presenting at the annual conference for the first time, the Teaching Excellence Award and the Mathematics Excellence Award. So these are all great awards. We had eight Teaching Excellence Award winners last year, and we can only have eight if we have, I think, like a, a very high number of nominees. So the number of awards we give out is based off of the number of people who are nominated. So nominate yourself or someone else and try to give some appreciation for everything that people do every day. So if you've liked what you've heard about today and everything that AMATIC has to offer, there are memberships available. And so these are some of the benefits to AMATIC individual membership, and you get the subscription to the AMATIC News and Mathematic Educator. You get to register for webinars like this one today before anyone else. You get access to past student math week tests and reduced conference registration rates. So there's lots of perks to the individual membership. 
And then you could also ask your, your administration or someone at your institutional level to purchase an AMATIC institutional membership. And so these have some of the same benefits, but the biggest perk is probably that comes with the one complimentary discount member registration uh, for the conference every year and all of these other benefits. And I know that my institution is an institutional member and uh, we've gotten our money's worth for sure, especially when we had a job opening and used those complimentary job listings on the AMATIC website job board. We were able to post there and, uh, and we did get some, some applicants who found out about the, the position opening through the job board. So there are lots of perks and I would encourage you to at least have your institution look into that. So that brings us to the conclusion with just about a couple of minutes left for questions or comments or things like that before it has to be turned back over to Julie. But I, I don't see any comments in the chat at all. So I don't know if that means no one has a comment or everyone left and I didn't realize it since I can't see the list of participants. So I hope that everyone enjoyed the, the presentation and learned a little bit about something that AMATIC has to offer. I mean, I would be interested at the very least, even if you don't have any questions or comments, like just hearing what you thought was the most interesting part about today or, or hearing about what feature that I talked about today that you might use that you haven't heard about before, because that helps us as the AMATIC board and AMATIC leadership sort of realize, you know, what things do people know about, what things do people not know about, what things do people want to know more about, and that type of thing. So I love to hear more feedback even on things like that. I'd like to make a shameless plug right now. I'm going to switch back to my slides so that um, I don't hear myself again. <laughs> There we go. So um, a shameless plug for we did a webinar um, a while back about the website. So all this information that John's talking about is on our website, but sometimes there's a lot of layers to go through. And um, our webmaster gave a tour of the entire site. So check that out in the archives. It's really a good one to check out to figure out where, um, where things are located. I'm not seeing any questions come through or comments. So can I do my bit then, John? Is that okay? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm assuming so. <laughs> okay. I had to turn the Brady Bunch view back on uh, because for some reason I wasn't showing when I was talking, and I'm not quite sure why. So something is definitely weird uh, with the settings here today. Sorry about that. I'd like to thank you all for participating in the webinar today. If you'd like to support future AMATIC webinars, please consider becoming a member, um, bit.ly slash join dash AMATIC. Um, you can certainly find more information there. John's already mentioned Facebook, so I'm not going to even talk about that again. Um, past recordings of the webinar here is that hyperlink again, the bit.ly um, slash AMATIC dash webinars, um, and that is in my uh, signature line of my email. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording here.